Welcome to the Disc Golf Prescription Podcast, your weekly dose of disc golf. Hello and welcome back to the Disc Golf Prescription Podcast. I'm your host, John Nicholson, and today I'm here with Mr. Connor O'Reilly, winner of the 2021 uh, Delaware Disc Golf Challenge, which is an elite series. Awesome win, by the way. I loved seeing that. And uh, today we are here to talk about disc golf and, and how to improve at disc golf in general and how to improve at disc golf quickly. So thank you so much for joining me today. No, absolutely, man. I think uh, <laughs> me and John have kind of been on a similar path in terms of the years we've played and both came from other sports backgrounds. So I think it's uh, definitely good for us to be able to talk about something like this. So I'm excited to be here and thanks for having me. For sure. Uh, you were one of the very first people I thought of. A lot of the people I have on here at the beginning I've talked about are going to be friends of mine. And it happens that a lot of friends of mine started at a very similar point in time. I actually looked it up today and didn't realize how similar it was though, yeah. which was pretty funny. Um, so, so you brought up your athletic background. So tell me a little bit about what was your background before disc golf? Basketball was always kind of like my thing that I had a passion for. And once I got to college and wasn't playing at the college level, I kind of realized like how much I could have pushed myself and like dreamed bigger goal wise. And like, I really could have made that a thing for myself professionally. And I kind of like really always regretted missing that bill. So once I found something like disc golf and was like, started to get that little itch into wanting to play every day. I was like, okay, like I don't have to live with these regrets of like, dang, why didn't you pursue or dream big enough? And like, why'd you limit yourself mentally to where you couldn't pursue something like that? So that was a, uh, yeah, disc golf has been like a big savior for me, I feel like in that sense. So awesome. Uh, I looked up your rating history and everything. I saw that the very first rating you had was 915 yeah. uh, in October of 2017. I think that was the very first time I was rated as well, which That's I didn't cool. realize that. I, so I, I do have to give a little caveat. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but uh, I'm going to tell on myself right here. But okay. My first tournament, I think I averaged like probably like 888 or something like okay. that. And then my second one, I averaged 915, but I wasn't signed up for the PDGA yet. And they, <laughs> they let you tell them which tournaments you played leading up. They don't actually just take all the ones you played. I don't know why. All right, PDGA, so, we need to sanction my Connor. My first rating was 915, when really, it could, probably could have been upper ni- 890s. Okay. If it, if it was an honest one. You heard it but here first. Way, I was low 900 to start, so there you go. You, you get to see the, the kind of baseline when I first was like, yeah, you know, I'm into this enough that I want to start playing some tournaments. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Um, so with you saying you you're into this enough to want to start playing tournaments, how long did you play disc golf before you started playing tournaments? It was like pretty much a year before I started playing tournaments. So I, I picked it up like August of 2016-ish. And then, yeah, the first few months were just pretty casual, just trying to beat my brother because he can never throw anything better than me and he was kicking my butt. So oh, no. I was like, this cannot happen. Um and then, yeah, it kind of turned into like, you know, I'm staying to finish the course when he's leaving after nine. And, you know, I'm really just like trying to absorb the game and get better because I like really started to take a liking for it. Very and cool. Then, yeah. About six months of kind of like thinking I was working hard. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm ready for some tournaments. And then the thinking you're working hard just keeps progressing and progressing. And you keep taking those steps and your consistency and like your work ethic if you're trying to get to get good quick. So, yeah. Gotcha. So work ethic is a big thing I think about whenever I'm mention or hear your name um that work ethic was it was it there when you first started it kind of sounds like it was and what did your practice routine kind of look like at that point in time it kind of evolved over time like at first the work ethic was just like getting out and playing trying to absorb the game as much as I could I never played like a ton of golf I mean I played here and there but I still like wasn't fully like grasping the the, the strategy and the best ways to like mentally manipulate the way to play the game and so I think like at first I want to just immerse myself in disc golf thinking like kind of like basketball. I feel like once I hit a certain point, like I played enough on the court, like you kind of see enough situations and like scenarios that mm-hmm. you know how to like attack certain ones. And I think with disc golf, I was like, all right, I need to get these hours in and like see, see the different courses, see how I need to shape a disc for this type of shot or maybe make it do something that it naturally doesn't want to on a flat release. And like, yeah, so I think at first it was just like trying to figure the game out in that sense. And then once I started playing tournaments, I really realized like, okay, this is what I'm lacking compared to my competitors. 
in terms of this or that. And like at the, at the time I started playing tournaments, I had a very shoddy backhand and I had no forehand pretty much. Like I would throw it if I really had to. Like, and uh, so that was something that after the first few tournaments, I was like, right, all these guys that are beating me are like just chipping the course apart with a forehand or overhand or something mm -hmm. at, at that level, like playing advanced, you know? So uh, yeah, that kind of made me start to look at the game from like, okay, how can I like expand my tool set? Now that I kind of understand like strategy and like where you need to be aggressive, where you need to kind of play a more simple shot. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, then it kind of just came to like, all right, now I'm watching the top guys and like trying to take parts from each of their game and figure out like, what are like the simple, obviously everyone's mechanics are be slightly different, but mm -hmm. like, what are the simple mechanics? Can I get rid of this stab I'm doing before, while I'm running up, before I go to throw? Kind of make sure my head's not turning too early or like get the timing right, make sure I'm not rounding. So that kind of started to happen. And I really started to kind of look at the mechanics and break that down. And then I started to really focus. Like most of my work though was like always on the course. Like I would go to the course, practice these things, make myself throw shots on certain holes. Like here and there I do field work, but for the most part I just eat on the course and then like a lot of putting. And over time also, like when I first started to play pro, I think I took like another little kick up of like, all right, I want to outwork everybody like in my city and around me so I can like put myself up where I want to be, which is like playing with the top players. And um, then I kind of started looking at my body like, all right, at this time I was like 220. So about 25 pounds more than what I, I usually play at right now. And so I kind of looked at like what I was doing and the way I was taking care of myself, like off the course, because I was starting to do a lot of the right things like yeah. on the course and work wise. But like if you're doing all this hard work and then you go off and you just like get a little too like gluttonous with your cal your cal caloric intake and yeah. not hydrating right <laughs> or getting to sleep or like making sure you're doing things to strengthen your body or whatever, like eventually all the skills you have aren't going to matter if you get an injury or like your body is just like working against you. So I started to kind of look at that and I lost like 30 pounds and then that really kind of gave me some confidence too. I think at, by that time I kind of like really started refining my, my swing where I had like a pretty trustworthy backhand and like a really good forehand at the time that I leaned on a lot. I think oh, recently the game's really been pushing more and more for backhand just for longevity and you can just do so much more with a really good backhand than you can with the forehand as, as great of a tool as the forehand can be. Yeah. So I think uh, one of my recent progressions has been that, like I'm starting to almost like eliminate forehand from a lot of my game planning off the tee. I'll still throw it on a lot of other shots if I feel like yeah. it's a real clean line and whatnot, but. He does have a really good forehand too, by the way. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people still think of me as like a forehand player. And when they tell me that now, I'm like, oh, like I'm that, throwing that's a lot of backhand right now. That, so so that's like, that's really interesting. Like people think of you as a forehand player because yeah. I've never thought of you as a forehand player, but I didn't meet you till 2019 going into 2020. Yeah. And it was interesting that you just said when you started forehand was like a weakness. Yeah. And so you <laughs> during that 2017 to 19 period, you hammered yeah. that to death. Oh, yeah. No, I, I literally <laughs> like when I first started playing pro in Texas, I had this soft harp like I was right on my side of latitude like three years ago. and. I would just throw forehand and hyzer approach, like flat hyzer, like I was throwing forehand approach 200 in on pretty much any shot. And I almost totally reworked that now to where like, I'm, I'm pretty 50-50, almost even leaning on the backhand, try to like throw those little soft like chip in bits. But yeah, that's kind of a long winded way to say how like my worth ethic, ethic over time kind of just like took a little progression, some steps up and, that, and also like the way I worked, like shifted to try to fill in the holes in my game and and make sure that I just didn't really have a weakness. I, cause I felt like as a player, like I'm, I'm already, I'm 29, you know, John's a little older. So, you know, it's like, wow, he's, wow, he's my 30, heart he's one, he's 30. I'm 31, 31 now. Oh, he it just hurts. 31, see? It hurts. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> he understands like, like, yeah, we can throw hard. We can throw far. We can throw farther than we usually do on the course if we want to, but being accurate, being consistent, still hitting those landing zones that you can score from, I think is really all that matters. So like learning, learning that, like, Cause when I first started playing, I was trying to show people like, oh, you know, I throw far with anyone like yeah. around me. And then like, you get you get up and you throw with Anthony Brello once and it's like, I don't want to, I don't need to try that hard. I don't throw far at all. It's like, okay. I don't need to try that hard. It's okay. <laughs> you know, if I get mad, I can throw a 72 if I want. I don't need to get, throw a 78. Like I could maybe do it if I like spend a lot of time working on it, but it's like, is that gonna help me score? Probably not. So yeah, I think uh, just like I said, taking those steps and always evolving your game and evolving the way you work, don't get stagnant, you know, if, uh, like sometimes you can get in the groove where like you're you're doing this certain routine that's working for you great, but then like you kind of just get stale on it and you get unfocused on it. 
So you always got to kind of switch it up, I feel like, and just keep challenging yourself. That, that's perfect. Because, like, I, I love being inside your brain for this type of question because, like, I had three or four questions following that up, and you just – knocked off like point by point because i i ask you like how did what was your practice routine like and then i was going to expand into like yeah. how does it, it how did it change as you got better and you're we like well, it's, it started like this <laughs> and then boom 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 it's i love the step-by-step -step progression about how your how your game grew and where your head was at in each of those places that's awesome to see because i know i saw you started at 9 15 mm -hmm. by uh, January of 2020, he was uh, over 1,000 rated. So that's what I consider that a very quick progression. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, I met you just prior to that, actually. Funny mm -hmm. story. Uh, 2019, uh, at this point, it was still... It, what was it? It was the Next Generation Tour is yeah. what it was, mm -hmm. not in a yeah. DGT that it is now. Yeah. The year before, I switched the naming or whatever. Yep. And so uh, I met you there and this was before your weight loss. And so I was yeah. like, you you were talking to me and I was like, hi. <laughs> like yeah. we didn't know each other. No, I, didn't, and, I just and, went to watch the final. Yeah, you were there spectating. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm from and the, so we, these are my home courses and I want to watch these guys play. And like I kind of I was like, I had switched to pro like just earlier that year because mm -hmm. I like I want to be here. And I was like, you know, what? Like, it's like, game time. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like slightly regretted. I was like, man, I probably maybe could have made more money, got more exposure playing the next. Oh no! I, I think like, Kyle would have crushed both of us. Yeah, I think Kyle was looking like a young Simon Eagle cup. I know. Oh so, yeah. gosh. Sorry, but anyway. No, no, no. You're good. Uh, so it's funny we met then, and then uh, I think next time we met was at Waco. Um, so that's about five months later. Yeah. And uh, you you'd already you looked that's, very similar. That, do you look like right now? That winter was like. I, yeah, I lost that weight within a couple, like couple months, really. Just like, yeah, so like the second time I met you, like I didn't really even recognize you for a second. I was yeah. like, oh, it's Connor. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when like our friendship really kind of started yeah. moving on from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that was, it was, I already had so much respect for you there getting like in great shape uh, in between the first and second well, time I met you. Well, shortly after that next gen tournament, I played a B tier that I won against Ezra and Mason, Aderhold, and uh, I'm looking at Ezra and I'm watching him throw and he's like the first like people are coming up to me while I'm practicing for the tournament like Connor have you met Ezra he throws farther this, than you was this long hair Ezra yeah this long is hair long hair Ezra this is long okay. hair okay. Ezra yeah, so. <laughs> a little extra power notch there but no people are like I had three to five people come up before the tournament to me like Connor have you met Ezra he throws farther than you it's like the first thing they're saying to me I'm like uh, it's not the first time Ezra's heard okay. that it's like I'm like oh you know I'll believe it when I see it because at this time I'm kind of like one of the longer players in the in Central Texas like. So I'm thinking, like, you know, I can throw a bomb with anybody around here. And then I played, like, about six practice holes with him. And it took me a few holes before I finally was like, all right, he's got me by, by a little bit. Like, on the golf course, it's not always a ton. But there's times where it's just like, yeah, I'm not throwing that line. It's yeah. just not. I, I feel that way constantly. But <laughs> just seeing him in the physical shape he was in, um, looping back to what I was saying, is uh, what made me be like, all right, if I want to, like, continue at this level like yeah i just had a good weekend i beat these guys but like if i want to do this for a long time like yeah. my body's gonna need to be in a little better shape than a pint of ben and jerry's every night <laughs> what i'm doing right now so time to like evaluate some things and uh put myself into shape so i could definitely give like a little chunk of credit to ezra for kind of tossing a little coal in my fire and getting it i like that. that i like that shout out ezra <laughs> um with that being said, so I talked a little bit about how quickly you got to a thousand. Uh, apart from your work ethic, and it's just fine if that's the answer to this question. What what do you credit with that that quick improvement? I mean, I feel like, you know, I feel like I have a good body for disc golf, like the length and just like already having an athletic background. I feel like kind of gave me a slight leg up in terms of just like understanding quick, like having quick twitch fibers in my body and just like being able to throw explosively. Um, but yeah, really just, I think not only the physical work ethic, but like always mentally trying to like just fill in my holes in my game that I felt were weak. Like, like I said, I threw almost all forehand approaches mm -hmm. for a while and like playing in Central Texas, like playing against Brad all the time. It was like, okay, like that's a shot that he's like really good at. Just that straight little kind of bit at it. And uh, that's something that I just like made myself get good at over like, like probably like a year and a half, two years ago. And now like I feel really confident in my in my short backhand throw as well as just like any backhand throw but yeah i think just not only working hard but working smart and like 
realizing sometimes like taking the step backs and realizing like okay you can't like overthrow sometimes and don't just like get out there and throw unfocused like always try to have a goal when you're on the putting green like give yourself little goals that you have to meet before you leave and like actually hold yourself to it and that'll create some pressure like leading up to these couple days i've been making myself make uh 10 sets of five all five putters from like a spot the edge of circle one and like that builds a lot of pressure like on it when you get to like there's a lot of times where i have my first four and then i'm banned in the fifth one or like just like barely off so I've been doing that like this week leading up to Worlds, just trying to like, you know, and then like make myself make a couple from circle two of the full stack. Where like those are like hard to make a full stack of five from circle two. So yeah, it's like like last night I like just did one. I was like, you know, I guess I'm doing, but it's, like, it's, it's taken a while. But it's like <laughs> I think just giving yourself those little goals and creating tournament pressure in practice, which is hard to do sometimes. When it you is. Think you can do it, especially like in your just like focus specific practice, like. Sometimes practicing with your friends is like it's easy to kind of fall into the, the conversation and stuff, and like it's it's a good skill to have to like be able to block that out yeah. and work on that because it's something you're gonna need on the course. But yeah, uh, that's that's actually a huge thing for those of you at home. If you are not doing this in your putting and you struggle with tournament putting, absolutely do what Connor's talking about. Do do your normal allotted time, however much you've set out to putt, but give yourself. A, a goal and at first make it a little bit easier and progress it over time don't just destroy your confidence but give yourself a challenge like he was saying at the end like i have to make these five putts in a row the first one's not too hard the next one's not too hard three four and five especially number five if if you're tired of putting and you don't like practice putting and you're ready to go in that fifth putt is hard because you're like please I need to make this putt. Yeah, it feels yeah. it so much like a tournament putt. A lot of like me- more mental thinking. Than Just you. like a tournament putt. Yeah. Because you're like, man, this putt really matters, and that's hard to get out of practice putting. And that, and and I was able to lean on that a couple times today on the course. I actually, had, I think I cashed like three circle twos. I think I made my first three circle twos. I looked at actually where I was just like. I kind of like was able to feel like I was on the practice green almost, just because I I got the reps and I had the muscle memory, and like sometimes building that muscle memory is really good because. Like there's gonna be times on the course where your mind is just like it slips. Like as you're running up, it's just like thinking about something it shouldn't be. And if your if your if your mechanics are right, if you've smoothed out your mechanics and your muscle memory is crisp and like you've been working a lot recently on it, you can get away with Sometimes you can do it. Like, like, <laughs> eleven today, at Jones Park. I'm gonna let y'all know. Oh. I'm running up on the tee box and my brain's saying, "Don't hit the tree! Don't hit the tree!" I'm like, Connor, why are you thinking this? This is one of the most demanding shots on the course. It's that like 493. You're arguing down, yourself in the head. 493 <laughs> downhill, dead straight, essentially. Yeah, I'm throwing, I'm throwing six explorers. I'm throwing fairways, so I got to hit it real good. And I'm just like, Don't my mind you. wasn't in the right. I was like, why? And I, it's something I didn't even like ever think about, but then I'm running up on the team, and it's all of a sudden it's like in my head. And I just like pure the shot. But I can pretty much solely <laughs> equate that to I had solid mechanics, and I just – have the muscle memory from getting a lot of practice in this week so that's fair like i said build those mechanics up guys i think yeah you can have your own little thing to your game and like everyone has their own flair their own style but like is your turbo putting on every putt at the end of the day like advantageous <laughs> for you scoring great in tournaments like it might be fun and connor it be, hates turbo it putters. might be unique and like don't take this don't t- don't take a, a shot if i if you're one of those guys who's turbo putting or one of those ladies who's turbo putting but I just think it's not the best for all win situations. I think situationally, if you have a good turbo putt, absolutely, you're going to have an advantage on almost anybody on the course. But I think as a stock putt, there's a reason Paul, Ricky, all these guys are at the top, and you see how their putts. Just watch how their putt flies. Yeah, watch how it comes out of the hand. I and agree. I think we can all have our own little flair, but at the end of the day, throwing on a straight linear line through your target on your line, and having a putt that you kind of swing towards your body and then release at the basket obviously and open your hand at the basket is all that really like you need i i 100 uh, percent agree with that uh, sentiment <laughs> it's it's just so hard to maintain the angle or the spin on a turbo putt consistently some people are really really good at it but yeah. there's a reason a turbo putt only person hasn't won a world championship yet now if you go out there and you turbo putt only and you win a world championship we will take this back i will 
honestly be your personal slave for the rest of, <laughs> for the rest of my life. Oh Write goodness gracious! I might have just Connor you know, personal I'm, slave. I'm always in trouble. Someone's gonna be working hard on their turbo fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Connor, make me. Oh, if Connor oh, was my God. personal slave, he would make me a gourmet sandwich <laughs> every day of the week. Oh, this man is a sandwich master. <laughs> oh, but um, with all of that being said, uh. I love this question. If you could go back and do something differently uh, when you first started or just in those first couple years, uh, what what would you do differently? First thing that instantly comes to my head <laughs> is play pro right away. I think if you ever want to take it serious and you ever want to be like good at this game, don't be afraid to have a little fair failure at, at the beginning because like regardless of what division you are, you're going to have learned some learning curves. But like, why not? Just play professional. If you're really, if you're really trying to like, I want to make disc golf my job. I want to do with these guys. I want to be Paul McBeth. I want to be the best player I can be. I want to be the best player in the world. Like, if you really want to be that, then why not go learn from the best people in your area right away, so you can figure out what are they doing. How can I mimic that? What can I learn from them? And just be a sponge, you know. So I think, yeah, that's that's like the first thing that comes to my mind and that might like some people might think that you know like oh you know learn how to win in advance or whatever like yeah. learn how to win and like sure there's something to be said for learning how to win but winning is really just like building your game plan and literally going out and executing and being a robot and like trying not <laughs> to get trying not to get caught up in the emotions which obviously are going to be there yeah but then in the, the day just letting every shot be the shot and focusing on that shot alone and i think like yeah that's really no, I love I love that perspective. It's it's actually funny. This is not the place to get into it. I feel a little bit the other way. I appreciate both perspectives, yeah, no, but I, but I feel a little bit the other way. But it's it's interesting because it's nuanced, yeah. right? Nothing's nothing's black and white. I'm For not, sure. and everyone's their own person. So like obviously, you could have a ton of success doing it the exact opposite way of what I just said. So don't let like what I'm saying dictate like how you're feeling. But because like if, it is intimidating to step up and want to instantly play with the best players like when you're when you're yeah. at this level. But I feel like if you if you've played other sports at a high level already, I will say that's fair as I well. Think, and you understand like all right, like like especially a sport with like some mental and physical toughness, like which obviously any sport is gonna have like that you have to have the men, the mental toughness and like I do think individual sports have their own special mental yeah. toughness to them that it's a little bit different than team sports. It's different because yeah, I, I came from only team sports and like. In basketball, if I wasn't like shooting good that game or whatever, I could literally just try harder, run faster, run harder, like just hustle harder, and you can have more impact. Like you try that in disc golf. Try like to make that almost, putt harder, Connor. Literally almost going the opposite direction you want every time. If you're oh like tensing up and trying to go faster, or harder, it's like so that like disc golf really teaches you how to be one one with yourself. You know, so no, absolutely, it's a very uh, zen sport. Golf in general is a very, very Zen sport. It's all about being uh, better than you were yesterday and managing what you can control because there's just so many outside variables that can affect you if you let them. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so switching gears entirely away from, uh, away from disc golf specific things, do you have a workout routine while you were out on tour? And if so, like what? Yeah. What um, is it a little bit? I've been... The like second half of this season, I've been much more consistent on like trying to work out two to three times a week usually. Uh, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Usually, I'm usually getting at least my two to three though. And just like trying to hit a pull day, a push day, and then uh, get like a leg day in there and like trying to hit a little bit of abs every day that I do work out to. And I also have like a, a recovery routine that I do every single day uh, that involves like rolling out on a lacrosse ball and doing some foam rolling and mainly massaging stuff, some light stretching. I kind of believe more in like massage than stretching in a lot of situations, unless you like have like an injury and are really trying to like give yourself time to build back. But I think if, if you're in the competitive state and like putting a beating on your body all the time, I feel like a little bit of stretching is okay, especially like active movement, like mobility type stretching where you're not just like trying to lengthen your muscles. Um, I really am a fan of massage. So I try to like hit, hit that a lot. But yeah, I really just like, Getting in the weight room, I think, has helped me throw a little farther this year. Not not because like my form got any better, or because like I necessarily got, like have gotten a ton stronger, but I think I just like have gotten a little bit stronger to where like 
I trust putting more load on my body and it's like my body's just used to having a little higher loads on it, you know. So that's awesome. I remember um I think it was one of the first time we actually traveled together. It was in uh I don't remember the year. It was probably 2018 and it was at it was at in Lubbock. Lubbock yeah. It was in Lubbock. Yeah. And that was I remember the start of me and John's love affair, you guys. <laughs> we, we didn't stay in the same room. Um, you were doing uh, leg drains up against the wall. So you lay up against a wall and you have your legs go up against the wall. And basically you're like lying in like a hamstring stretch for a while. Yeah. And you were religious about doing it every day. I've done, I've done that almost every day for like since then. Jeez. And since like a little bit before then. But yeah, and, and like. I like to get out and use those compression boots now that the Pro Tour mm-hmm. has available for us, which is really nice. But it's, and even if I do get in those, I usually still go to the gym and like that's part of my recovery routine. I do ten minutes legs on the wall, and I also like can give myself some pretty good self chiropractic while I'm in that position and like push my legs away and pop a lot of my lower back and then like get myself back into a relaxed spine position to get like some some of my neck kinks out. But yeah, I, I really like to make sure I get that recovery in every day, and that's that's, that's a, great. That's an easy way just to like reduce some of the stress on your legs. And if you haven't heard of legs on the wall, look it up, you guys. <laughs> look up the benis- benefits. It'll change your life. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I, I've started doing it occasionally. I, d- I don't do it as religiously as you, but yeah. I've done it occasionally, and I'm like, okay, this is yeah. great. I like it. It is. It's, and it's, you just sit there, and, like, you get a little hamstring stretch. You The blood, like, drains through your legs where it can filter a little better, and it has, like, a ton of, ton of good things for you, and you can sit there on your phone and scroll like you're going to be doing anyways probably at yeah. night or whatever you're doing, and it's like, or if you're like a disc golfer like me, like a lot of times you're making your next post while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. And I can also like put the lacrosse ball down and like massage out my tricep and my little bit of my lap. That's doing perfect. It. It's like, yeah, it's We're like doing double task ball. Yeah. That's so awesome. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> <That's good. Yeah. laughs> uh, with that, does your workout routine change in the off season at all? Or do you, in this case, do you anticipate it changing? Yeah, I'll probably add like, the program that whatever Seth Seth last year gave us like a really good program Seth Munzee with Disc Golf Strong if you don't follow him make sure you go follow him he's got a lot of good stuff for how to warm up how to prepare your body just for the rotational load that we put on all of our joints and all of our muscles and yeah I think uh, do his program as well as probably just some of my own like additional resistance training and yeah I probably incorporate some more hill sprints back into my one day, you did really used like, to be a hill sprinter. The hill sprints helped me lose a lot of my weight too. I had a <laughs> sick hill right across from my apartment, and I was like, you know, before work, I could go putt or go do some hill sprints. Or like, if y'all haven't done some hill sprints, like if you mm. want to build muscle and like have like the, maybe the arguably the highest impact like cardio muscle building, while also like low impact on your joints in terms of like anything you can do while running. Because you're moving up the hill, you can't quite hit the full like. You can't hit as hard force of like versus running downhill is awful for you. But as far as impact goes, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I think hill sprints like all it takes is literally five minutes sometimes, and like you're like you get that runner's high, and you're just like done. But yeah, it's please if you have not sprinted in a long time, work yourself into hill sprints. Don't just go yeah. do them. Throw up the, yeah, run a couple, <laughs> run a couple, throw up a couple, run a couple slow ones at first, you know, and just like jog it maybe and like feel how it feels. And you feel like you can sprint like obviously with the sprint you want to try to accelerate the whole time yeah. but yeah it's, it, a, it's that, that high intensity real. those are whew, those are rough yeah i love it um so it'll the workouts will get a little bit more intense in yeah, the off season frequency because i'll probably just i'll be playing as long of courses so i'll be and i'll also like won't be having as much travel time and stuff so i'll be able to spend a little more time do like what i want to do that's awesome I uh I personally believe, and I will talk about this frequently. I promise. Uh, working out, especially in today's game, is absolutely essential if you are looking to become a uh, like a touring level professional disc golfer. Or I think even as the sport evolves and it it becomes maybe regional level pro, if you're looking to be at the top, you are going to have to have some sort of workout routine because you're going to be have to be in shape enough to maintain the volume of practice and everything you need to do to be able to compete at that level, especially with how long the courses are now. Like uh, you mentioned that you felt like you gained a little distance uh, after incorporating working out. 
I've also noticed that it seems like you've maintained, if not gained distance with less effort. Yeah. Um, that's like, the biggest yeah, thing I've noticed. Good. Most people are like, oh, I don't even realize like you're doing hard. Dude, it looks so effortless. <laughs> it looks like you don't even throw the disc, and I'm like, wow. Like, what, just, <laughs> what the heck? I feel like I see some of that with Brody, too, when I watch him throw. Yeah. Like, it's like this high he's shot. A, that's he's, just like, you're he's you're he's a big like dude, plus but he's like a pounds, big like, dude. Big yeah. No, I don't if, know you've, if you've if you never met Brody, like, he's bigger than you think he is. Yeah. He's like my size, but just plus, like, some thickness on all. Like, you just turned him up on Madden a little bit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but yeah he mashes without even like very very little effort um well, awesome <laughs> yeah yes very little effort uh whereas me people tell me i don't look like i'm trying to throw hard but on the inside i'm trying to throw so hard <laughs> yeah, you definitely have a smooth swing though too. for like, sure it definitely doesn't look like you know yeah yours feels gorgeous like a smooth pool. yep i agree i i'm trying to gain some distance but um, on to the final question. I'm going to ask this uh, at the end of every episode. If you could recommend one thing to players looking to improve quickly, what would you recommend? Um, like I said a couple times during this podcast, I think uh, working on your mechanics is probably to me the number one thing for getting better. Obviously, you want to be a really good putter, and that can be there's some mechanics involved there. That's I think a little more individualized. Um, but there's still, you kind of want to get to that flat touch of hyzer, flat nose angle touch of hyzer seems like about the best way to put. Maybe like a little bit of nose down if you can figure it out and if you're a tall guy. But uh, yeah, I think figuring out your mechanics to where, like I said, there's going to be times on the course, no matter how mentally strong you are, that like your brain's going to go to a place that you don't necessarily want to be in while you're trying to perform this act of throwing the disc that you, like John said, you want to be zen. I think this is all supposed to be like, you're supposed to just like, have this target in your mind and like your brain's thinking about nothing with that and then like just doing the motion that you've done thousands of times and uh so i think if you if you really build your mechanics to where you can trust them and you know they're simple um then i think that can help get rid of some of those days where your mind's a little more cluttered and not as focused as other days like some days you're sharp and you feel focused and like your brain like you laser on in on this spot and like it's easy to not break off but there's some days where like you see that car moving and you see the person moving and you're listening to something. It's like, okay, yeah. or you're talking in your head about like, oh, wait, no, like this happened a couple holes back or like, why did you do that? So it's like, there's so many things that your brain can, can do if you're not focused or like if you have the right mechanics, you'll still have success sometimes. It's not going to be all the time, but you'll still have success sometimes. So yeah, guys, I think really dial in those mechanics, make sure you're videoing yourself, have friends video you and uh, don't be afraid to get a little uncomfortable to increase your score, you know? It's gonna yeah. take like kind of taking a chip back at like where you're used to shooting right now and the other guy sucks, but don't you want your ceiling to be higher? And don't you want like instead of like, oh, you know, I'm shooting I'm trying to get even at my home course, like I'm getting a little closer, <laughs> you know, it's like okay, maybe for a second you gotta step back and shoot some plus five to plus ten rounds because you're trying, you're focused mentally on tweaking your swing in one way, and then as you figure that out to where it becomes an innate thing that you do without thinking, then now all of a sudden, boom, you shot a minus five because you just have a better toolkit now and you, and you can attack the course better. No, I love that. And uh, one thing I'm gonna cramp in the building. <laughs> hey, by the way, I recommend staying hydrated. Uh, with that being said, like Connor just came here after playing around out at uh, Jones Park here at Emporia. This is actually World Championship Week. Not when this will drop, but it's World Championship Week. Um, one thing I wanted to add to what Connor just talked about is there are so many more resources available now uh, than when both of us started, even though we act like we started so long ago. We didn't start that, that long we ago. Had, we had enough to like make it happen, but the game is, especially yeah. at the top level, has was really... Well, know. now there's, there's so many resources. Like There's actually like qualified people giving lessons. So like if you sure. need to... We're, we're talking about uh, getting your mechanics set and really working on mechanics to start so that you don't have to go back and rebuild later. There's people who know what they're talking about out there. Uh, so find find an instructor who can help you. Find a YouTube channel. There's a bunch of good YouTube channels out there, including this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, there are people out there who know what they're talking about to where you don't have to figure everything out yourself and just watch pros play and 
trial and error it. And, and John brings up a great point. Um, I think, like I said, like you can study how you should throw from watching the pros and stuff, but like sometimes it's hard to formulate in your mind a good way to think about that. Whereas taking a lesson from someone who already knows the game and has already taught the game to others and who has played at a high level, like maybe the way they phrase it really sticks with you. And then all of a sudden, like it kind of unlocks that thing in your brain to where like you were, you were conceptualizing it. You're trying to figure it out, but like now it's said in this way, one way and you're like, Oh my gosh, that's, I know that's what to do now. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's another good point. And I would definitely add that on to what I said about the mechanics, like, cause that can help you get better mechanics is to go to somebody who, who's seen the game and knows the game. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for, for coming and doing this interview with me. Absolutely. I really appreciate sure. it. Uh, before we leave, plug yourself, dude. What do, what do you got going on? Where can people follow you? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, my YouTube's a little dormant right now, but definitely will be some, some fire in the off season. We did a whole Vlogmas last year and played 25 different courses along the Southern United States. So if you haven't gone and watched those, go check them out. Maybe it's something that that you'd like to play or something in your area. Um, but yeah, just trying to close out the year strong and then definitely dip myself a little more into the social media in the off season. Um, but yeah, Instagram, YouTube, go over to Dynamic Discs or Latitude, pick up <laughs> one of my tour series, signature triple burst faiths. They're pretty, get so, one. Well, awesome, man. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for